Authentic Stories is a licensing company that writes, composes, and packages socially relevant musicals in-house for educators and students to collaborate in the process of putting up a show for their community. The first musical I made was when I was in college and I actually got really addicted to the idea of like, wow, there, there's so much work that goes into this. Um, so that's kind of why I started, I, I want to make a company. My name's Avery Patemri. Uh, I just graduated with a BFA in commercial dance. I was interested to work on the show, The Consequences of Victoria Gray, uh, strictly because of the producer that is working with it. We've worked together before and I'm really inspired by his dedication to his original work. It would mean the world to us if you could check out Authenticity the Musical on any streaming platform. Before I worked on authenticity, I, I really have just done bare minimal vocal work. Mm -hmm. now, authenticity was kind of like, hey, how many songs can you do in a week? It opened me up to doing more yeah. music than just orchestral. Come on out! So this would be my second stage piece that I've directed solely. I'm definitely looking for more of like the dramatics, like I want to feel like I'm watching a Shakespeare play, but something that I can still understand and it's not language that's out of my reach. I'm definitely ex excited to see like everyone's talent, to see like what they bring to the table and what they're offering as a performer, dancer, actor. So the idea is to bring people together that all have like a common goal. That's not performing. It's not, um, I want to be an actor, I want to be this. It's like, no, I want the world to be a more empathetic place. I want the world to be a more empathetic place and that's how we come together. These may seem very like simple, but there's a lot of energy and a lot of tension inside of what we're gonna I do. I really want like the intensity just like pressure and anxiety. Being able to kind of rework that in a creative tone is kind of my goal for this. Hi, I'm Sarah Bryan and I'm playing Victoria Gray. I'm Faye Turner and I'm playing Xenia. I'm Liv and I play Akeem. My name is Robert Gallegos and I'm playing Bazzard. I actually am a Manny and I have a top secret interviewer that I've been training for years to finish the interview job for me. Hi. When I was writing the book, I actually had to take things that like worked for musicals and worked for books to try to make it cohesive. Like my biggest fear was that the musical would be a downgrade from the book, or the book would be a downgrade from the musical. So when I heard about this book that Johnny was writing, I was really excited. I was excited to go to the book release. I've never had a friend do something like that before, so it was like just kind of an exciting new thing for me. And then to hear that it was gonna be a musical and there was gonna be a cast recording and that they were gonna do it for Fringe. Well, I would worked on Authenticity before as ensemble, and uh, I was ensemble for the consequences of Victoria Gray, the uh, cast recording. Where's the responsibility? Like knowing that you didn't compose the music, like what interested you about this? When we worked on something years ago, I wrote a theme for Bazzard. He was yeah, the pilot. We yeah, were way were, different back then. Yeah, you did an original pilot a couple of years yeah. ago for Victoria Gray. You know, I li it was cool to see how the story evolved. Mm -hmm. It's just an outsider. Yeah. And I, I, there was a point where I wanted to, you know, I've seen so many iterations, like I feel like yeah. I, I want to join the world. Um, how do you feel being the main character? Honestly, kind of scary. I've never done a musical before. You haven't. I have not. But then I was really excited to get the part and to read the script and to work with the writer and the director to, you know, become Victoria Gray. Victoria Gray is about uh, this girl who kind of deals with the social expectations, kind of like Miley Brittany uh, experience. And um, it's about these magical amulets that each come with like this mental defect. You know, you're not allowed to teach conspiracies, Kodai. Um, she was chosen by a prophecy mm -hmm. to collect and protect amulets. Exists in a time in the future where people are void of emotion. They're not allowed to express themselves, or it's very, very frowned upon. She's unique because she is a child, but she's also trying to save mm -hmm. the world. And that's a huge responsibility on mm -hmm. anyone, especially a 16-year-old girl. Everything is 
predicted for her. They want to plan her whole life for her. They're like, this is your path. You have to do this. You have to trust us. This musical has a very complicated lore and backstory to it, you know, very much like Star Wars or like Lord of the Rings or... King said true. Oh, I have mine. <laughs> Something that stuck out to me was specifically like the cracks. Um, cracks are a form of trauma in which that is shown through the body. And it, to an, an, an emotionally inappropriate choice. I feel like she's... Um, she like expresses her emotions in like a positive way. Hmm. She tries not to be this negative. Hi, uh, my name is Clifford General. Um, I am a composer and I write mu original musicals. I'm the director and composer and lyricist of Connected the Musical. Hi, I'm Tess Rowan and I'm the writer of Static Noise of a New Musical. Well, I always say write because you have something to say. Uh, you have a story to tell, you have a journey involved. Why are you, what is the story that you want to tell? Is it personal? Is it from a book? I'm Allie and I'm a musical theater educator and a composer lyricist of original musicals. You know, as a writer, it's really fun. You come up with these characters inside your head and um, what they might do in the story. And being able to create that in music and just really becoming connected with the story and the setting of the show. When you have a new work, the people who are in the cast, even the writer, the director, the costume designer, everyone gets to do their own original spin. With shows that are very well known, um, they come with certain expectations. Uh, you need to sing a song like this, or it has to be performed like this, or the costumes have to look like this. There, it's just so exciting to see something that was on a page come to life. Yeah. So I've learned to kind of see it like, okay, yeah, like maybe this is a mess, but like I can see that it's definitely going somewhere. Mm -hmm. For you know, because I, I also write things. I know it takes time yeah. to get your thoughts on paper. I understand the idea of like. This is personal to me and I've pulled this from you know, like my uh, experience with this or with that and mm -hmm. so I get that and I get producing that as the director of my own work, right? But now I'm directing something that's not mine. But what I like about old musicals is that you can like, you've seen the movie, mm -hmm. you've maybe read the books, but then you could recreate it into like your own version and it's, you like, like get to relive the moment but in your own. Like, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's right. I guess that's what we're yeah. doing. Right? It is like a tension building thing. Okay. It's dramatic for like you said. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okie doke. Four is Uh, do you want to go over it again? We're going slow also. Do you want to try it? very vulnerable to like put your work out there. It was really exciting getting to see everyone else's perspective on the show. We ended up changing um, some of the roles to best fit the actors of the show. Like when people don't understand it, it's like gut wrenching because it's like, oh my gosh, like do they not understand it? And then like kind of getting insecure if people are gonna stay or not because of how um, they might react to the material. So like, how do you think I can avoid being cheesy? You know, like. Well, sometimes you might want to be cheesy to get the audience to laugh a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not like a complete bad thing. Yeah. But that's if you true. don't want to be cheesy, like a hundred percent, maybe like edit some parts out and like yeah. try to filter in better stuff. I'm Deidre, and I'm playing the role of London. I'm Barrett Holthus, and I am playing Kumari. Hi, my name is Samantha Georgette Reed, and I'm playing Saskia. You have to also like represent what the community is besides who's like not in the Lotus Temple. You know what I mean? Because there's there's something there that everybody wants to be emotional. They want to do it in a safe way. So what if we create musicals that give a safe freedom to emotional stuff? We're all figuring it out together. And I think sometimes and when you're an actor, it's helpful to come into things that are already established because there's already an outline, a foundation, a blueprint for you to just build upon. But in this case, we're all learning together. So there, there's a bit of a struggle. There's a bit of back and forth. There's a lot of corrections. But I've never gotten to work on a production where 
there was more source material. And so you're developing your character and you're thinking about the relationships between everybody and usually it's just you have you have the script and that's what you're going off of and you make it up the rest of it up in your head or you talk to your castmates about it. But this is the first time there's been something more for me to grasp onto and read more about. And um, especially for me going from a place that wasn't really about theater. I, mean, I was one of maybe three people graduated from my high school to go into theater. And so new musicals have been an amazing way to not only meet other artists, but also learn more of the arts world of creating a character. What is different between Saskia in the musical and in the book? Um, you don't have as much time to kind of have that fake out moment where you think mm -hmm. she's good and then you kind of realize maybe she's mm -hmm. got some of her own stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the book is a book and the musical is between 45 minutes and an hour. Yeah, like I'm just excited to continue learning how to take other people's ideas, interpret them through my lens. Mm -hmm. I usually don't get the opportunity to music direct someone else's music. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, because you're always busy writing. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really kind of fun, because I, I haven't heard the music like properly. Like yeah. I've listened to it maybe once or twice, but yeah. I don't really know it. Like when you write it, you know it so well. Yeah. So now I'm getting to play with someone else's ideas. Mm -hmm. the, cast and, the cast knows it just as well as I do. We've all listened to it once. What ended up being a seven-person show ended up being um, a final closing night performance that had um, myself and another actor performing the show as a cabaret. Uh, the thing that Saskia has taught me about myself is kind of how good I am, I guess, at locking down on my emotions if need be. Try to understand where she thinks she's coming from because Saskia very much thinks that like she's saving the world and doing whatever it takes. Accepting who I am and who I am growing to be and always knowing that I'm growing in space. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons that like Kumari has given me. I think the tone of the story really relates to our day and age right now with how young kids feel in our society when they feel like alone or detached from other people around them, especially if they're separated by their emotional state or mental state. According to 2021 survey data, 13.84% of teens have had at least one major depressive episode in 2021, which is an increase of 260,000 cases from the previous year. I'm Felicia Stalzer and I'm playing Helen. I'm Molly Kaufman and I'm playing Master Kodai. I think in our nowadays youth culture, there's kind of like an emphasis on just being like, oh, I, I don't really care about this and that's how you be the cool person amongst your friend group. And no, it's actually really good to care about things. It's actually really good to want to strive for connection. I was in my first play when I was four at the Children's Theater in my hometown. In college, I was like, I'm gonna be a film major. And then it was way easier and more inviting to be a part of the theater department. Without sounding so brainy, it just fuels my imagination. I think we all have a little kid inside of us that just wants to come out. Finding theater within high school and my theater group and growing up learning about the arts and singing, it gave me access to kind of, con not control my mental state, but explore it a little bit better. Most people become actors because they have to express something. There's something mm -hmm. that's missing in their daily life and the acting is the one part where you do get to express your emotions fully. Um, but you know, every musical theater song is written because the person is feeling too much to keep speaking so they start to sing. Yes. So I think that that's like a really, just a great way to kind of, if you're feeling something and you don't know what you're feeling, you slap on a show tune and you sing along to it and then you yeah. figure out what you're feeling. I don't think it should be a touchy subject and I think we as a society are getting better about it and talking about it and not being so apprehensive. The message of like social media, right? Um, a lot of people can really solely depend their mental health on that social media. I, I think, you know, a really good teacher, whether it's original or something that's been done before, has to have a, a bigger picture and, and see what do they need right now in history so they can get connected to how they really feel. I don't know that piece. I can't hum it. So I might not choose to go to a concert if I haven't heard anything in it. People are creatures of habit. That when something is familiar, it is much more appealing than when something is new.
you know, to change one person's perspective or, um, you know, get, or I don't know, to, to even inspire somebody to say, you know, you're the reason why I chose to do this or like that song is really kind of like what gets me up out of the morning. Modern musicals is so fun to bring to high schools because then they are a little more malleable and the topics are more relatable for students. I think kids have a lot to gain from any musical, but especially original musicals because they haven't been done by a million people and everyone has seen them and have their own impression of them. And the way that you see a show once, that can create a lasting impression on you. And I think people can learn that even when you're getting told what to do, you still have your own voice mm -hmm. and that it's powerful and you should use it. And most of the time that gut feeling you have is the correct gut feeling. Yes. Follow your intuition, your heart. Okay. So how is it um, with, uh, or do you guys feel confident that like, because we had like an hour today to kind of like get ready. Do you guys feel like if we show up in costumes? how far um, I am willing to go to get my story out Especially, there. Especially, I think this musical is going to be great because it has, it has like story, mm -hmm. like personality, and like superpowers and stuff. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. It's a little, it, it feels, it feels a little uh, like a, like a salesman that is selling a product that other people don't necessarily want and try to convince them that it matters. Seriously, thank you so much for like making my taking my baby is this watching, it, me? watching it for three months that's you molly is it most improved uh, you guys like seriously you guys like i'm not even i i was you know i was worried about putting it up like taking it to but you guys really uh, like it's it's so much better than i even thought it could be Aww. we're sarah i love a memento we do we did, did it without the lead I, oh. these past two years i've been living in this bubble of my own uh creation and so it's going to be interesting to mentally step back onto uh, reality. Um, but I really want to thank everybody who has been helpful in helping me share this and, and getting my story out there. And I really hope, um, I really want my art to bring everybody together. Um, I want my art to not be mine, but everybody's. working on a musical right now called Triple Shots. Essentially a story about consequences, miscommunication, love and coffee. Static is an original Morse code musical about a teen girl trying to find her dad who was lost in the woods on the Appalachian Trail. Connected the musical. It is an exploration of the effect of social media on our mental health and it features the story of a transgender boy who discovers his identity through his social media experiences. Nikki in, and the Angels takes place in uh, Los Angeles, 1982. They are ushers in a theater, and one of the uh, plays that comes to town stars a Broadway star who is gay. And he sort of mentors Nikki in the coming out process. 